Erin Moran, best known for her role as Joni Cunningham in the beloved sitcom Happy Days, was once a shining star in the world of television. But in the final days of her life, she was a shadow of her former self, battling addiction and financial woes. Her tragic story serves as a reminder of the dark side of fame and the toll it can take on even the brightest of stars. In this piece, we'll take a closer look at the heartbreaking final days of Erin Moran and the legacy she leaves behind. Erin Moran's story is one of triumph and tragedy. Erin Moran was born on October 18, 1960 in Burbank, California. She was the youngest of six siblings in a family that encouraged her love of acting from a young age. At just 14 years old, Erin landed the role of Joni Cunningham in Happy Days, playing the spirited younger sister of Richie Cunningham. The show aired from 1974 to 1984, and Erin grew up in front of the audience's eyes, becoming a household name and achieving stardom. However, as she grew older, Erin faced challenges that many child stars in Hollywood encounter. She struggled with addiction and financial troubles, and her personal life began to spiral out of control. Somewhere along the line, the bright-eyed Joni Cunningham became troubled Erin Moran, another casualty of the Hollywood child star machine. Despite her difficulties, Erin continued to work in the entertainment industry. In 1982, she reprised her role as Joni in the short-lived spin-off Joni Loves Chachi. She starred opposite Scott Bio, who played her love interest, Chachi Arcola. The show followed the adventures of the duo as they pursued music careers in Chicago. The Joni and Chachi characters were so popular that Columbia Broadcasting System was eager to feature them in their own spin-off. Erin Moran wasn't excited about starring in Joni Loves Chachi. In a 2009 interview, she revealed that she was talked into it, even though she wanted to stay on Happy Days. Unfortunately, the show didn't do well and was canceled after one season. After the cancellation, Erin and Scott Bio returned to Happy Days for its final season. But after the show ended, Erin found it hard to land leading roles on television. She appeared in various series including Hotel, Glitter, and The Love Boat. However, she was never again cast in a major television role. In the mid-1980s, Erin decided to leave Hollywood and move to a home in the California mountains. In a 1988 interview with the Toronto Star, she revealed that she had suffered from depression after the two series ended, and she was faced with a lack of acting opportunities. She also disclosed that she had experienced mental and physical abuse in her childhood, though she claimed that the entertainment industry had, for the most part, treated her well. Erin Moran married singer Rocky Ferguson in 1987, but their union was reportedly troubled. In a 2007 interview with People, Erin spoke of the pressure put on her by her husband to deny her fame. The couple divorced in 1993 and Erin married Stephen Fleischman later that same year. In April of 2011, Erin and four other cast members of Happy Days filed a multi-million dollar breach of contract lawsuit in Los Angeles Superior Court against Columbia Broadcasting System. The other plaintiffs included Anson Williams, Don Most, Marion Ross, and the estate of Tom Bosley. The lawsuit claimed that Columbia Broadcasting System had failed to pay them for merchandising profits under their contract. The Happy Days actors settled their lawsuit with Columbia Broadcasting System in July of 2012. They received $65,000 each and future royalties. In 2010, Erin and her husband, Steve, lost their home to foreclosure. Erin was later spotted living in a Holiday Inn Express in Corridon, Indiana, about 130 miles south of Indianapolis. Photos of her in the hotel's parking lot circulated on the internet. In the pictures, Erin appears disheveled, wearing a gray t-shirt and plaid shorts with a cigarette hanging out of her mouth. Tragically, Erin Moran passed away at the age of 56. On April 22, 2017, police in Harrison County, Indiana, responded to a 911 call and found her unresponsive at her home in New Salisbury, a rural community about 8 miles north of Corridon and approximately 20 miles northwest of Louisville, Kentucky. Erin had been living in a trailer park in New Salisbury with her husband and mother-in-law. Erin's death was a shock to many, as the cause of death was initially unknown. However, it was later revealed that she had succumbed to complications from stage 4 cancer. 
Erin had been battling the disease in secret, and her death was a devastating loss to her family, friends, and fans. Erin Moran's death sparked widespread speculation and rumors. Many believed that her death was drug-related, after Mail Online reported that she had died of a heroin overdose in her mother-in-law's trailer. However, on April 24, 2017, the coroner and sheriff of Harrison County, Indiana, issued a joint statement that contradicted those reports. The statement said that Erin Moran likely died from complications of stage 4 cancer, although the type of cancer was not specified. Standard toxicology tests were conducted and no illegal narcotics were found at the residence. However, the results of those tests were pending at the time of the statement's release. Erin's friend Paul Peterson of The Donna Reed Show and actor Stephen Wishnoff both revealed that Erin had been battling cancer. It was later revealed that she had squamous cell carcinoma, skin cancer of the throat. On the same day that the statement was released, Erin's former co-star, Scott Bio, stirred up controversy by suggesting that her death may have been related to alcohol and drug abuse. However, Bio admitted that he was not certain of the cause of her death. Scott Bio faced backlash for insinuating that drugs were the cause of Erin Moran's death. He later apologized on Facebook, saying that he had made the comments before the actual cause of death was known. Bio also explained that he was only asked about Aaron's troubled past with drinking and drug abuse on the morning of April 24th. On April 25th, 2017, Aaron Moran's husband, Steve, released an emotional open letter detailing Aaron's final days. He began by recalling their meeting on April 22nd, 1992, and how they had planned to celebrate their 25th anniversary by going to Thunder Over Louisville. However, Erin's health had deteriorated rapidly, and she had passed away on the same day they had met 25 years prior. Steve explained that Erin had been feeling fine on November 23, 2016, their anniversary. But a few days later, she woke up with a small blood stain on her pillowcase, which they initially thought was a result of her biting her tongue. As the days went by, the blood stains got bigger, and they realized that the problem was with her tonsil on the left side. They went to an ear, nose, and throat specialist who performed a biopsy, which revealed that Erin had squamous cell carcinoma. She began a rigorous regimen of radiation and chemotherapy, with radiation treatments every weekday and chemotherapy only on Thursdays. Despite this, her condition worsened rapidly. Steve's letter provided a poignant and detailed account of Aaron's illness and how it affected both of them. It was a testament to their love for each other and the strength they showed in the face of adversity. Aaron's health took a turn for the worse by the middle of February. She was unable to speak or eat or drink and had to have a feeding tube implanted. Despite this, she remained happy and active and continued to text people on her phone all day. However, on the 21st of April, Erin began having trouble breathing. The following day, she wasn't feeling well and needed Kleenex. Her husband went to the store and when he returned, he laid down next to her, holding her hand. He fell asleep and woke up an hour later to find that she had passed away. Erin's husband later learned from the coroner that her condition was really bad. The cancer had spread to her spleen and she had a lot of fluid in her lungs. Additionally, part of her brain was infected. The coroner explained that even if Erin had been in the hospital being treated with antibiotics, she would still not have survived. Despite the devastating loss, Erin's husband took comfort in the fact that she passed away in her sleep, in the comfort of her own home, with him by her side. He bid farewell to the legendary Erin Moran, who will always be remembered.